Hello, my name is Chris Bohannon, and I'm the Collections Manager at Dallas Historical Society. Today we're at Old Red Museum in downtown Dallas. I'm here to meet with Chris Freeman from the Texas Society of Professional Surveyors. And he's going to teach us a little bit about Warren Ferris and his first survey of Dallas County. Hey, how are you doing? Good afternoon. How are you? Not too bad. What are we looking at? We are looking at some survey, antique survey equipment that would have been much like the equipment that Warren A. Ferris would have utilized in his survey of Dallas County in the summer of 1850. What kind of tools did Ferris use during his survey? Well, typically in this era, you had a, a compass, and I think this was um, a compass to the um, 30 minute um, accuracy level, so it didn't even go to the, you know, today's instruments would be degrees, minutes, and seconds where they, at that time frame, they were just going sometimes to the nearest degree or the nearest minute, but this went to, to 30 minutes. So, you know, typically it would be set up on a tripod, which we can't do in here. Um, and then below the, the instrument, they would use a plumb bob, basically get over their, the point they were occupying, you know, like this, and so they were on top of a point. And then the surveyor, Ferris in this case, would manipulate his instrument to find where north was with the needle here. So he, there's north and then whichever direction they were going, they would turn the instrument based on knowing where north was and now going the direction they wanted to go. He would look through these peepholes and he would line up the, the, the rod man out there with a pole and he would get them online based on his peephole. So he would wave them left or right to get on his line. And so now you've got line and then he had these chainmen who would use this gunner's chain. And this is a period chain, so this is from that time period of 1850s. It's called a gunner's chain. How did survey equipment change from Ferris's time to what you use today? That's a that's an interesting question, and kind of one of the one of the nice things about my profession. I started in 1984, and at that time we mostly chained not with this chain, but with 100-foot steel chains. Um, but soon after, so I started in 84, and probably 85 or so, we got this instrument that had a laser on it that you hit these buttons and a laser would go out to a prism and voila, here was this distance that would show up, you know, and everyone was just like, wow, this is nice, you know. So, in surveying, the technology of the tools is always changing, and it's, that's probably one of the biggest things surveyors have to keep up with is the, the advances in technology. You tools. can still go out and, and survey with this equipment. And in fact, if you retrace old surveys, a lot of those surveyors that do that kind of work, they will go out utilizing the equipment that was used on that original survey because you can literally fall right on top and follow that original survey using the equipment they used. If you went out with ours, it's so much more accurate that you may be off feet or hundreds of feet. I mean, so tonight, today we're using GPS receivers. We're using 3D laser scanning, we're using drones, um, just a variety of technologies. And where Ferris, I actually was surprised that his crew was as small as it was because a lot of in the frontiers, you may have had 20 or 30 people on a survey crew. Um, and now really the technology, one guy yeah, that one knows guy what he's doing is computer literate, technology savvy he can go out and collect gobs of uh, data 
um, very quickly and email it back to his, you know, he can be in Amarillo and sending me the information as he collects it and I can be looking at it and analyzing it and then 20 minutes later telling him, hey, go over here 32 feet and see if there's anything over there. How did Warren Ferris's work influence the growth of Dallas? At the time of the survey, Dallas County was not very populated. I think less than 200 people in the county. So this is, you're really out on the frontier. Um, and Ferris had explored all around and here he was in Dallas County. So again, at this time, by establishing the county lines and then Dallas itself being named the county seat, all the focus of all the immigrants and all the settlers that would be coming in, it would be to the city of Dallas. As a surveyor, he, the other thing that, that is in his notes is he's making notes of where good timber was, where good land for cultivation was. Um, again, as a surveyor, what you're doing is you're making the maps that are gonna allow for other people to come in and then start dividing up land. did it take Ferris to uh, survey the county? According to the notes, this was done in June and July of 1850. So two months. And again, if you read through, which he's basically got almost a day by day recap of what he's doing. Let me see. I mean, it's almost a month on that eastern line. You know, not too bad if you think about it. Now again, you've got Ferris, the surveyor, and he was the one that would operate the instrument and keep the notes. He was the educated one. And then he, I think he had six or so assistants and he probably had people along the way that would join for a few days and chop line and do things like that. But, uh, but not too big of a survey crew really. And they probably have a, had a horse or two or a mule that would, carry provisions and equipment for him. What kind of physical obstacles did Ferris run into during his surveying of Dallas County? Partly in his previous time out west, you know, he had to battle with Indians and other elements, but a frontier surveyor, you, you had to fight the elements. I mean, the weather, now, okay, he was doing this in June, July, so, it, it looked like a week's worth of rain. We all know June and July around here is, it's not pleasant weather usually, it's hot. It's, um, I don't know, they don't really mention mosquitoes or snakes or that kind of thing, but I guarantee it down where they were because I've been in those areas, it's, it's loaded with them. Um, there's no mention of any trouble with Indians. It may be by that time kind of the Indian issues around this area had been resolved and the Indians had moved on. I think they had kind of been pushed more to the west and north. Well, hey, thanks a lot. All I right. really enjoyed it and I learned a lot. Well, I, I appreciate it. And one of the missions of the Texas Society of Professional Surveyors is to not only educate our members, but to educate the public. And hopefully this this will go to that end, so um, mission accomplished.